So introduction to rate loss. So if you analyze this graph and diagram, you see that in the first picture, you have all reactants. Notice on the graph, we have number of molecules on our vertical axis. So we have 50 molecules of our reactant. Over time, if we follow our purple curve, we go to zero. So at the end of our reaction, we have no reactant left. At the beginning, we have no green, which represents our product. And over time, if we follow our curve again, at the end of the reaction, we have all products. So this curve illustrates the rate, and I'm going to show you some ways to calculate the rate law. So rate laws must be determined from experimental data. So you're usually given information in a table form. Um, our equation today is dinitrogen pentoxide decomposing. And the form of the rate law is going to look something like this. Your rate is equal to a constant, call that the rate law constant, times the concentration of your reactants, N2O5. And one of the things we determine from the data is what the exponent on the concentration of the reactant is. So today, we're going to look at this reaction. And the rate was determined from an experiment. So you might recognize this graph from our last lecture. So we have two different rates um, at two different times. And we know the concentration as well as the time. And the table gives us the two samples at um, in our experiment and the two rates. So using this, we can determine, we'll determine the rate law, which is this form. Our first goal is to determine the value of x. We'll calculate k the RNES constant and its units, and we'll determine the order of the reaction. So to determine the rate law, we have rate is equal to K times the concentration of your reactant, N2O5, raised to some power. So we want to um, compare our two experiments. I'm going to put experiment one on top and compare it to experiment two. So my rate for experiment one is 5.4 times 10 to the minus fourth moles per liter second. Rate two, 2.7 times 10 to the minus fourth moles per liter second. On the other side of our equal sign, we have K. We do not know its value yet. We know that N2O5 initially is point nine zero or in my first experiment it's raised to some power x divided by k its value in the second part is 0.45 raised to some power x so let's cancel anything that we can notice that times 10 to the minus fourth can go away moles per liter second goes away um, I did forget to write the units here. We'll squeeze in a little molarity. They both go away. Our K goes away. So at this point, we have 5.4 divided by 2.7, which is 2, equals 0.9 to the X divided by 0.45 to the X, which is 2 raised to the X. So X is a value of 1, because 2 to the first power equals 2. So our rate law is written as such. You write rate equals K concentration N2O5 and it's raised to the first power. You don't usually write it but I'm going to just to emphasize it and that is our rate law. Once we know that we can determine the value of K. K is going to be determined by using our rate law that we just calculated and using the data from 
one of the experiments, it does not matter which one you use, we will just solve for k. So I'm going to rearrange first by set k by itself. It's going to be the rate divided by the concentration of N2O5 raised to the first power. So notice I'm not writing it here. So our rate, let's use um, experiment one just because, is 5.4 times 10 to the minus fourth. Now units are really ex important for K and they can get really complicated. So don't skip writing them in your calculation. Rate is always moles per liter per second. Concentration is always moles per liter. And this one's raised to the first power. So my concentration is 0 0.90. I'm going to write instead of molarity, moles per liter, so that it looks exactly the same. And let's calculate and get rid of what we can. So 5.4 times 10 to the minus fourth divided by 0.9 gives us a K value. The magnitude of it is 6.0, two sig figs, you should think about that, times 10 to the minus fourth. Now the units, notice the moles cancel, the liters cancel, so we're left with seconds in the denominator. So you could write it like that. You usually see it as seconds to the minus one. So either of those is fine. That is your K value for this particular reaction. The order of the reaction comes from the exponent. And with ours, we only have one reactant. So we know that it's raised to the first power. So the order of the reaction, since this is one, we say it's a first order reaction.